Good afternoon. Uh, distinguished participants, I very much work on behalf of the panelists. I would very much like to welcome you to this uh, session. Uh, before we are going to discuss concrete actions advancing the integration of gender, water, and food security. Um, I must apologize ahead, uh, right now that um, I'm developing some bad cold, so I'll be sneezing in between. You'll forgive me. I'd hoped the Swedes would have planned better weather. <laughs> Unfortunately, they were not able to do that. Um, oftentimes, we mistake uh, the word gender uh, that's, I think oftentimes it's taken for granted that when we talk gender, then it's just women and not men. So I like to say that gender refers to socially constructed expectations about roles, behaviors, and activities appropriate for females and males, as well as uh, their rights, resources, and power. Gender thus shapes one's life one, one's life's chances and one's role and often translate into inequalities in human capital, economic opportunities, citizenship, and political participation. But two, two decades after the phrase gender mainstreaming was first coined at the 1995 Beijing UN World Conference on Women, fatigue has started to creep in. And this vital issue is relegated to a sideshow. Even well wishes feel it is something that bounces up and down, but never kind of takes off. Our focus today is on getting it back to the center of issues, particularly on the food sec security world, with its associated, associated water and land issues where so much depends on redressing gender imbalance. This event is addressing issues related to gender imbalance and attendant effects of the whole world. But allow us to be proud as Africa too, the first region to prepare a continental strategy for all sector actors, including government departments, local authorities, NGOs, and development support partners, and the vital role of women, like my former colleague, Honorable Maria Mutagamba, whose stewardship kept the fire burning through the lengthy process that involved 40 African countries, over 80% participation. The main issue for this event is how to move beyond declarations, notwithstanding how inspiring they be and ensure action really takes place. Um, my hope is that we'll take this beyond seminars and workshops so that next time we come back, we're, we will be talking in terms of uh, how much has been achieved uh, since this uh, event. We must develop measurable performance indicators and for sure, what gets measured gets done. Likewise, what doesn't get measured is often neglected until the next meeting. So we keep going on. We must develop a mechanism to measure the impact of our actions and compare against what we and those we represent expect. Developing and agreeing on common indicators will create mutual accountability among sector actors community leadership, but also government, donors, and civil society is a key step in this process. This session involves participants from the whole world, and the speakers are from, from some of the international institutions, Global Water Partnership, International Water Management Institute, FAO, and bilaterals. They're coming together to lend their considerable experience and insights in a common effort to agree on, stand, on standards and indicators for gender in water and food security, particularly for de developing countries in South Asia, Latin America, Africa, and the small island states. 
this is not the end of a process. We should not be launching any products here. There is an African saying, if you want to go fast, travel alone. But if you want to go far, travel together. This is the beginning of a process which at country level, at regional and international fora, and most importantly, at community levels where impact is needed most, can improve the effectiveness of the actions of different, of different implementing agencies with synergy and creativity inspired by having a common, a common purpose and common measure. But as we discuss, uh, as we discuss and advancing the integration of gender, water, and food security, we must not forget external externalities that we are not in control of. For example, climate change. C climate change has become real. In my country, we are experiencing drought, floods, and predictable weather pattern, uh, mudslides and all these other factors, which of course compound uh, the role of women in, f in production of food. Uh, so it, it would not, we would not benefit very much by keeping these externalities outside and not factoring them in because they will definitely uh, affect what we come out with or what we will achieve at the end of the day. I hope the next time we meet, we shall be measuring progress and can hold each other accountable for the outcome and not just lament, of, of, uh, lament about what has not been achieved. We in Africa through AMCAO and our respective governments are certainly waiting and ready to help if you meet any stumbling blocks. I thank um, GWP, FAO, IWMI, and other colleagues in water and sanitation program. I also want to mention that oftentimes we relegate sanitation, or we don't uh, put it um, at the same level as water supply. So it's very, very important that this subsector is taken into consideration. Uh, thank uh, International Food Policy Research Institute Stockholm Environment Institute, Women for Water Partnership, Water Research Commission, and others for joining hands. And we invite our fellow women and men from the rest of the world to join in this great and defining effort of our times. <clears throat>